HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to fill you in with the latest happenings in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Hiller's winter sports have started up and we have highlights from some of the first games. Hopkinton Drug hosted their annual open house and Hopkins School hosted their annual winter concert and also Matt Clark has your HCAM Insider. But first, here are some happenings in town you should know about. Last week, the Hopkinton School Committee interviewed and hosted a public forum of the four final candidates for the Hopkinton School Superintendent position. The four candidates include current Assistant Superintendent of Schools in Southboro and Northboro, Gregory Matineau, current Assistant Superintendent of Franklin Public Schools, Peter Light, current Assistant Superintendent in Hopkinton, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, and current superintendent of Uxbridge Public Schools, Kevin Carney. A decision is expected soon. You can view all the public forum and school community interviews on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Is your child looking to participate in Hopkinton Little League baseball or softball? Well, it's time to register. The deadline to register is December 31st. You can register at HopkintonLittleLeague.org by clicking Register Now. This beautiful picture was taken by our own Mike Terosian, and it's a pic of the town common after our first snowstorm of the year, dropping six inches of snow throughout the area. A couple days later, the menorah was put on display at the town common to kick off Hanukkah. This picture was taken by Eric Carty of the sunrise on the lake the day after the snowstorm hit the area. After the snowy Saturday, it was a beautiful sunny Sunday. Hopkins School hosted their annual winter concert. It was a packed house for the event. We'll give you a glimpse later in the newscast of the show. Despite snow hitting the area last Saturday, Boy Scout Troop 1 kept busy selling Christmas trees and wreaths. Get down to the CVS parking lot to purchase a tree or Christmas wreath very soon before they are all out. The Boy Scouts will also be going around town January 6th and 13th to collect the disposed of trees. The Middlesex Sheriff's Department welcomed 34 new corrections officers this past week. A ceremony was held for the graduates from its 41st Basic Training Academy at the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. Hopkinton Drug hosted their annual holiday open house. The beloved event featured music, arts and crafts, a few vendors, and of course, a visit from Santa. Here's a look. Hey folks, come on down to our 29th annual open house here at Hopkinton Drug and Hopkinton Card and Gift and join in the festivities. There's face painting, Twas the Night Before, Christmas reading, Santa, all kinds of events, and uh, uh, shopping to do for the holidays. So you can come right down here to 52 Main Street in Hopkinton, Massachusetts. And with that, I'm going to pass it off to a couple of Sanders helpers. 
This is Abby. She works in the lab and works with Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> Abby the Elf, Merry Christmas, my young friend. I hope you're all going to come down to Hopkinton Drug to see us. we got lots of fun times. There's goodies for the kids and for the grown-ups. And, of course, you'll get to see me, Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. So I'm Allie, and I'm with Sigveris. So we are a company that does compression hosiery, and um, Hopkinton Drug is one of our vendors. So you can buy compression hosiery here. Um, we have a certified fitter here. Her name is Lisa, so you can come in at any point. She'll measure you properly, um, educate you on our products. So. All right, what does uh, compression hosiery do? What's the benefits? What does it do? Um, so anybody that has any type of vein disease um, might need compression. It's also great for sports as well. So here we sell the sports sleeves, and we also sell the Traverse socks as well. Um, so that's going to help with lactic acid with um, build up. It's also going to help just with recovery, muscle recovery. It's going to just basically help your legs feel better at the end of the day. Um, so all of our compression, it's gradient, which means that at the ankle it has more compression and then it has less compression as you go up the leg. Making oh, yeah, caps. Yeah. Working on the sand ornaments, oh, ring ornaments. Oh, I love that he's holding the scarf. That is very sand interesting. Up. Very nice. No. I see you. Their buttons. Hey Santa's buttons. Say hi oh, to the camera. Carlo. Can you Show say hello craft. to the camera? Hi. Show your craft. The camera the up there. Oh, what did you make? Snowman? What did you make? Cheese. Wow. <laughs> Sabrina, what did you make? <laughs> 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 I'm busy with my cooking. Very nice. Say Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. You know, Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen. Comet and Cupid and Donner and Blitzen, but do we call the most famous reindeer of all? Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer had a very shiny nose, and if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as they shouted out with glee, Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history. Foggy Christmas Eve, Santa came to say, Rudolph, with your nose so bright, won't you guide my sleigh tonight? Then how the reindeer loved him, as he shouted out with glee, Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeer, you'll go down in history, you'll go down in history. You'll go down in history, you'll go down in history. Yeah. Yeah. Coming up next on HCAM News, we have the latest Hiller sports highlights and scenes from the Hopkins Winter Concert. Plus, Matt Clark has our HCAM Insider. You're tuned into HCAM News. Don't go anywhere. HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and healthcare services. Hi, my name is Margie Wigan, and I want to invite you to join me for my new show, Character Matters, on HCAM. We're going to talk about why do people choose the behavior that they choose? Why do they choose to be good? We're going to hear from people in history, we're going to hear from local heroes who make great choices, and we're going to hear from some puppets who talk about things they've seen, and they're going to say, what? Did you see that? Yes, I did. Please join us.
Have you ever considered texting and driving? If so, you should know the consequences. If caught texting and driving for the first time, you could get in a $100 fine plus your license taken away for 60 days. The consequences only get worse the more you get caught. Even if you don't get caught, there could be serious effects. You could get into a car accident and hurt yourself or someone else. Texting and driving is a very dangerous combination, so stop before this happens to you. Welcome back to HCAM News. The winter sports season has started and the Hillers are hoping their momentum from a terrific fall season carries over. Here is a look at the opening week of the winter sports season. Hopkinton Hillers varsity basketball in their season opener with Holliston. Tommy Ambrosoni from the top of the key dials long distance and arcs this one in to make it 14 to 11 Holliston. The Panthers led 14 to 13 after the first quarter. Hopkinton took a lead into the second quarter. They outscored Holliston 24 to 15. Drew Rancatori comes through here for the points. Hopkinton led 37 to 29 at the half. Fourth quarter, Hopkinton leading 60 to 53, but Andrew Lynch came to play for Holliston. He lays this one in. Holliston leading 71 to 68. Seconds left in the fourth quarter. Hopkinton needs a three to send it to overtime. Ben McKenzie with the ball. And the bucket, 71-71, we are heading to overtime. Andrew Lynch tried to respond, but no such luck. Unfortunately for the Hillers, Andrew Lynch took control in the fourth quarter. He put up seven points in the four-minute overtime period and 26 points overall in the game as the Holliston Panthers capture the 87-83 win over Hopkinton in the season opener. Hillers Hockey opened their season against Westwood at their new home, the New England Sports Center in Marlboro. The Hillers dominated the first period. They had about 20 more shots on net than Westwood, but it remained scoreless heading into the second. A little more than midway through the second period, still scoreless until Will Abbott off the faceoff sets up Owen Delaney and Delaney wrists it past the Westwood goaltender Justin Anderson to make it 1-1 Hillers with 6 minutes 32 seconds left in the period. Third period, less than a minute left. Hillers trying to hold on to the 1-0 lead but the Wolverines have it in front of the net. The pressure is on and Jake Shields able to poke it through and tie the game up at one apiece with 38.6 seconds left. One last opportunity for the Hillers here off the faceoff but the final shot opportunity goes just a bit too far to the right and the game ends in a 1-1 tie. Certainly a bit heartbreaking after the Hillers dominated all game long, but certainly good to get at least the one point. The Hillers start off the season in a tie with Westwood. Be on the lookout for Hiller basketball and hockey airing all season long on the HCAM channels. This past week, it was a packed house at Hopkinton High School for the annual Hopkins School Winter Concert. Here is a look at what was a great performance by the Hopkins School Band and Symphony. of that tune. We all have powerful voices and need to use them to make good choices to make the world a better place. Our next song is called Snow Day. What kid doesn't want a snow day? We have been working hard to make the ending, which is in two parts. Balance perfectly. I'll give you every guarantee that I can make.
that time. A whole lot of programming is coming up on the HCAM channel. Standing by to tell you all about it is HCAM's promotions coordinator, Matt Clark. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of the HCAM Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and here's what's happening this week on HCAM. On Friday, December 15th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers boys basketball team takes on the Westwood Wolverines live on HCAM Ed. On Monday, December 18th at 7 p.m., Local poets and musicians gather to share their art in an open mic episode of Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. On Tuesday, December 19th at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Medway Mustangs live on HCAM Ed. And at 6.45 p.m., the Hopkinton Board of Selectmen's meeting will air live on HCAM TV. On Wednesday, December 20th at 7 p.m., Margie and Lisa are back and invite you to join the conversation on a new episode of The Margie and Lisa Show live on HCAM TV. On Thursday, December 21st at 6.30 p.m., Margie Wigan talks with kids and community members about the importance of being reliable and dependable on a new episode of Character Matters. And on Friday, December 22nd at 6.30 p.m., the Hillers girls basketball team takes on the Mellis Mohawks, live on HCAM Ed. And also on HCAM Ed, the 7th grade school concert, 8th grade school concert, and high school chorus concert will air. If you want to know more about all of HCAM's shows before they air, then head over to hcam.tv slash connect, where you can sign up for our HCAM Insider Newsletter. Or if you want to know more about what's happening in Hopkinton, you can sign up for our daily news updates. That's all for this week's Insider. I'm Matt Clark, and as always, thanks for watching. Back to you, Tom. Thank you, Matt. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Don't forget, you can stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. Be sure to head over to our website to view pictures and videos from throughout our community, and also to stay up to date with upcoming events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv with your help. We'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. As always, thanks for watching HCAM News. Take care and enjoy the rest of the day. Last week, the Hopkinton School Committee interviewed and hosted a public forum of the four final candidates for the Hopkinton School Superintendent position. 
The four candidates include current assistant superintendent of schools in Southboro and Northboro, Gregory Matineau, current assistant superintendent of Franklin Public Schools, Peter Light, current assistant superintendent in Hopkinton, Dr. Carol Cavanaugh, and current superintendent of Uxbridge Public Schools, Kevin Carney. A decision is expected soon. You can view all the public forum and school community interviews on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash HCAMTV. Is your child looking to participate in Hopkinton Little League baseball or softball? Well, it's time to register. The deadline to register is December 31st. You can register at hopkintonlittleleague.org by clicking register now. This beautiful picture was taken by our own Mike Terosian, and it's a pic of the town common after our first snowstorm of the year, dropping six inches of snow throughout the area. A couple days later, the menorah was put on display at the town common to kick off Hanukkah. This picture was taken by Eric Carty of the sunrise on the lake the day after the snowstorm hit the area. After the snowy Saturday, it was a beautiful sunny Sunday. Hopkins School hosted their annual winter concert. It was a packed house for the event. We'll give you a glimpse later in the newscast of the show. Despite snow hitting the area last Saturday, Boy Scout Troop 1 kept busy selling Christmas trees and wreaths. Get down to the CVS parking lot to purchase a tree or Christmas wreath very soon before they are all out. The Boy Scouts will also be going around town January 6th and 13th to collect the disposed of trees. The Middlesex Sheriff's Department welcomed 34 new corrections officers this past week. A ceremony was held for the graduates from its 41st Basic Training Academy at the Lowell Memorial Auditorium. For the 20th consecutive year, Elmwood hosted the annual swearing-in ceremony for their We Deliver program. The program allows students to learn what it's like working to operate a post office. The program helps build skills, teamwork ability, as well as other applicable experiences which relate to the real world. Principal Ann Carver explained the program at the ceremony. So today is a We Deliver ceremony, a swearing-in ceremony. As I've already said, has a 20-year tradition, and it's, this program is offered in other areas, I believe, around the country. Uh, it's not specific to Elmwood School, but it's something that we've been doing here for a long time. And there's a pretty rigorous process to be a part of um, the postmaster position. So I, standing beside me uh, is Carl Sagami, who's the postmaster in Hopkinton, and we mimic our procedures a little bit uh, after the, um, the procedures that happen in real life. And so if you decide you're in third grade and you decide you want to be a postmaster, this is what happens. You, mostly what happens. You indicate to your families that you'd like to be considered for postmaster, and we set aside a day. This happened right before Thanksgiving. Come on. And everyone who got scored a perfect score on the written test was advanced to the next stage of our procedures. So then folks came back um, on a second day to write an essay. And the title of their essay for kids who scored 100% was Why I'd Make a Good Postmaster for the We Deliver program. And um, so students submit their essay to the office. We take the names off the essay because we do not want to be swayed by um, knowing who wrote what. And then we share the essay with volunteers, staff members who volunteer to read the essays. And they get sort of ranked one through, depending on how many kids, I think nine children um, scored a perfect score this year. So the essays are ranked and the top four are chosen as um, postmasters. Hopkinton postmaster Carl Zagami swore in the postmasters as well as the rest of the student participants in the program. Sophia Zanella, Enzo Abruci, Acadia King, Maggie Flynn, Be a true faith. 
to the faith and allegiance to the same. And allegiance to the same. I further swear. I further swear. That I will. That I will. Well and faithfully execute the duties. Well and faithfully execute the duties of the office. Of the office to which I have been appointed. To which I have been appointed. I will conduct myself honorably. I will conduct myself honorably. Rendering the best possible service. Rendering the best possible service. In the highest form of respect. In the highest form of respect. To the customers. To the customers. And the employees I serve and serve with. And the employees I serve and serve with. I take this oath freely. I take this oath freely. Without mental reservations. Without mental reservations. For purpose of evasion. For purpose of evasion. What's your role at the uh, post office again? The post office. I'm the postmaster for both offices, the Woodville and the Hopkinton post office. Okay, what were you doing here today at Elmwood? Today we were doing celebrating the 20th uh, installation of postmasters and the uh, fellow crew of the little post office at the We Deliver program that they have at the Elmwood School. And for those that don't know, what does a postmaster do? Postmaster is a jack of all trades. Today I was actually out delivering, uh, but most of the time it's it's keeping the flow and making sure everybody comes to work, delivers all the mail that comes into the town, um, and that my crew comes home, goes home safely on a daily basis, um, and basically servicing the public in, in the Hopkinton town. And how do you like this uh, We Deliver program? It must be a, a good thing for the kids to really learn a lot about the uh, post office industry. It is, especially with the letters, everyone's been doing so much on email. It's nice that, you know, I'm sure when a grandmother or a grandfather mother or father still get that personalized card whether it's a birthday card holiday card uh, even the sympathy cards it means a lot to people and it's nice to see that old handwritten you know stationary items that are still going out throughout the postal service and 